I'm Mick, this is MickCraft, and I'm doing something a bit different today. This is a game that I played with my friend Toby of Las Cronicas de Toby in Warcraft 1. We played an online match, we each recorded it, and unfortunately my video file got corrupted, so I did not have the gameplay footage anymore to share with you. Toby uploaded a excellent video of our match um, a couple weeks ago. I commented on it, I shared it within our Discord. I thought I'd go back through and actually watch it and just share some of my commentary and thoughts on the match. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this now and, uh, and review this online game of Warcraft 1 which I thought was pretty cool. You know, it's a game from 1994, and we played a one versus one match. Toby is down in Argentina. I'm up in Michigan, and we were able to play head-to-head -to -head together, which uh, was quite nice. Now, as I'm typing here, Toby got pretty lucky with the starting position in that the gold mine was rather immediately available. Uh, looks like he also had a much more open area than I did. In my starting zone, and you'll see my base a little bit later in this video. But in my starting zone, I actually had to walk all around just to find a gold mine. Plus, there were trees everywhere, and you know, you have to build your buildings next to these roads in Warcraft 1. And so I just had a horribly complex base layout to start out, which was a, a bit of a crutch at the beginning, but it is something that you deal with. One thing I'd like to share that's really cool for Warcraft 1 if you buy the Good Old Games edition of it. Within the Good Old Games launcher, there's actually a Warcraft Orcs and Humans multiplayer launcher, which is kind of a just a little tool to help simplify the process of joining a multiplayer match with somebody. You just need their IP address, but if you each have a Good Old Games copy of Warcraft Orcs and Humans, you're able to set up and play a multiplayer match that way. Another thing that's a good way to play Warcraft Orcs and Humans Online is through the War One Gus mod. I posted a video about that earlier. I'll post a link to that in the description as well. But the War One Gus mod has an online launcher that's more similar with the Warcraft 2 Battle.net edition. Um, so that was quite nice and uh, makes it easier to play this game, which quite frankly, I didn't even realize that this game had online play. And it appears it, it shipped with it. Um, it just, I, I always figured, you know, there was like old school LAN or like IPX type connection um, gameplay with each other. But uh, being able to do it online adds a new element of fun. One issue with it is the server lag. So the way that the game seemed to deal with the server lag. And again, you know, Toby is down in Argentina, I'm up in Michigan, so we're not exactly close together, um, and the, the, there was quite a bit of server lag, so Toby has sped the video up here so that it looks like it's running at normal speed, but the reality was the units were actually walking very, very slowly. It almost looked like you were on the slowest possible setting, even though we had it turned all the way up to fastest. Likewise, they had very slow response times. If you ask your footman to move to the left, you issue the order, and then moments go by, and then he starts doing it. So that was something that we were dealing with. I'm, I've been meaning to try playing another Warcraft 1 online match with possibly someone even closer um, to me just to see how that might impact it. But that was a... It, it was still fun. We, we had a good laugh about it, I think. <laughs> Toby and I did. But um, it was still fun. It was just uh, tremendously slow and also... Uh, pretty ridiculous sometimes trying to get your units to do what you wanted them to whether it was lining up uh you know shots from your catapults or even as you see here toby's trying to get the grunt moving and trying to get that lined up things of that nature um so a lot of a uh, lot of interesting things going on as we played the game there now toby is sending out his grunt to scout and that was one of my goals early on, was to get my first unit out there as well. And you'll see, we'll actually encounter each other very quickly here. And I didn't realize, so you know, in Warcraft Orcs and Humans, you see the grunt moves, and the fog of war gets permanently cleared. Wherever he goes, you can now see that area forever. So my initial footman, I tried to have it fight Toby's grunt, um, which is what, he'll be on his way out there shortly. And I realized... 
Why did I do that? I should have just sent the footman to Toby's base, had him run around, try not to get killed, and then I would have permanent vision of his base, know exactly what his unit composition is. And that's really the strategy you'll want to take in a Warcraft Orcs and Humans matchup. So there goes my footman. And Toby's actually making the same mistake right now. So you see, he's sending his grunt back to deal with my footman, but he's already got a grunt in his base. What he really should be doing is using that initial scout grunt to get a visual on my base, explore it, and then have permanent vision on that. And there I am making the mistake. I'm sending the footman back. I'm like, oh, I'm going to take this grunt out. It's going to be awesome. And my other footman's going to join up with him. And you know what? My footmen, they're about to win this battle, which is... Uh, so, I, I thought I was doing good, but after the fact, I was like, okay, come on now. I'm doing the little switch there, the uh, lower health footman backing up to let the higher health footman tank it. So, things that you learn as you play, and now I'm waiting on the bridge for the other footman to arrive. And really, it should have just been a straight, straight charge back in. Because also, I just gave Toby time to get the spearman out. The Lancero in Spanish. Uh, fun fact about Toby's channel, he posts a lot of great content. Toby shares uh, older games, similar to how I do. Uh, he's been doing a much wider variety than I have, including some really cool content on alpha versions of games. He showed the alpha version of the first-person shooter Doom, which is one of my favorite games. I had never seen the alpha before, and there's a lot of interesting differences in the way that it looks and, and the way that it handles. So uh, please check out Toby's channel. It is in Spanish language. So also if you speak uh, Spanish, uh, you can get some great content that way um, in your native language. So uh, please check out Toby's channel, a link to his version of this video. Well, this video, quite frankly, just, just with his commentary will be in the uh, description along with a description of, uh, or a link just to his channel in general. Now, Toby pulled off some great kiting here, and part of it that was tough, again, was just the fact that uh, the server lag was making it very difficult to control my footmen. I would order them to do something, and they would, you know, totally mess it up. So again here, I tried to disrupt his economy, but really the biggest benefit to what I was doing there would have been scouting out that information there. Nice desktop background, Toby. <laughs> uh, good quick little back out there. No big deal. Um, so yeah, now Toby's spearmen are coming across. Now, my thoughts at this moment in the match, I was like, oh boy. I only had, I think, back at my base, maybe one archer and one footman or something like that. Um, so I was just hoping he would take as long as possible to get back out to me. And then I'd be in a good position to defend. Um, so... Looking back on the match, uh, I understand why Toby's going on the, the offensive here, and I, I think I would have made the same decision as well. I uh, probably would have actually been better, though, just uh, to hold off and uh, take advantage of your, uh, your edge that you had over me from taking out my four footmen there and uh, really bigging up, building up a much larger army that would be ready to just come right in and crush my base. But uh, Toby's about to get the first views of my base, and I can see his units right now as this is occurring because I had total fog of war view on it. And so I, I was ready and I was in a position to uh, to really uh, sneak in and, and take him out here. But if you notice, I stayed back because his force was bigger than mine. I wasn't about to chase him. And I believe I have a catapult on the way shortly here. Um, maybe it was just archers at this point, but catapults are what I was going for. I'm also in the process right now, from my end, of teching up to a tower so that I can get my Conjurer, and then with the Conjurer, the ultimate unit of Warcraft Orcs and Humans. Above and beyond, overpowered, completely powerful, the Water Elemental. So I'm working on that right now, but I know I just have to survive this attack, and as you can see, it's tight right here. Now, archers actually outrange the spearmen, but spearmen have the capability to do one more damage than the archer does. And so because of that, it's an interesting battle. Archers can become more powerful in numbers because an extra line of archers can fire per, spe uh, per spearmen, but it really takes a large number of archers to, uh, to overpower them in that way. Now, we're seeing a bit of my base layout there. 
And if you notice, I had a very terrible, tight layout, and my peasants were having a really hard time mining gold. And the route they were taking, they were blocking each other, and I was trying to micromanage them to fix it, but because of the server lag, it was, uh, it was really tough. So Toby's already got a catapult out, and again, if I'd used my footman to scout out the base more, I would know that. But right now, all I can see is the base of his base, <laughs> the lower part of his base, the base of his base, you know. And so I have no idea that this catapult that's m is making its way around. I will know soon, though, because it'll. the only way over to me is that bridge, and I have vision of that bridge, which is uh, a big plus that uh, really, really proved to be useful in the battle as we, uh, as we conducted it here. So... Wow, the catapult has far range. An interesting fact about Warcraft 1, all units have the same range while they're walking, and then only once they stop does their full vision range uh, break out in the fog of war. And so if you're actually, if you're trying to scout, a good way to do it is to have like, a, so an archer or a spearman has really long vision. It appears the catapult has great vision as well. You actually want it to stop every once in a while, just to get a full vision range um, out there. Clear out that fog of war, and the archer is the best for it. The catapult moves very, very slowly, so the archer will, or the spearman will be better in that situation. He has a good staging ground up here, though, because again, I have no vision of it. Um, if I were to do this again, I would have just had that footman walk all over the place and get a lot of vision for us here. But like a fool, I just was dreaming of getting up a tower and getting my water elementals out. Although maybe not a fool. The water elementals overpower. You'll, you'll see what happens with that a bit later. Toby's tower is on the way right now, so he can get warlocks. And right around this time, my tower is also probably finishing up. It might already be done, actually. I was going for my classic strategy, Mass Conjurers. Yep, the Warlock and the Demon. So the Demon has more upfront strength than the Water Elemental. It has more hit points, and it deals more damage per attack. But the Demon has a melee range, while the Water Elemental has a range of three. And so you get a couple water elementals together, and they'll just steamroll through anything. The catapult deals a ton of damage to both demons and water elementals. My trick against that, though, is just to have the water elemental walk right up to the catapult. The water elemental moves more quickly than the catapult does. And the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so actually, this part's pretty funny here. Uh, Toby's uh, typing to me about how he's confused. I'm actually destroying my own barracks right now. And the reason for it is my, as you can see, there's all my peasants desperately trying to get gold for me. And I actually, I accidentally end up killing a couple of peasants here with my catapult, but I destroyed all the buildings in the way. And even though a couple peasants died, as you just saw one died there, it actually doubled my rate of income because the peasants now had a much more clear path to the gold mine, and they just made their way through. Yeah, I killed some of my own peasants. <laughs> I, I thought for a minute that this might backfire, because I, I killed three or four of my own peasants, but I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I took the risk, and I doubled my income as a result of it. And as you can see, the peasants are already moving much more smoothly there. Um, so, back to the water elemental control. If you're fighting a catapult, the catapult's attack will deal tremendous damage to them. But what you do is you just have your water elemental just move as close to the catapult as possible. The catapult's attacks will actually miss it, and then once you're on top of it, you can take it out. And from there, the catapult, uh, again, the water elemental moves more quickly than it. A demon does too, so you can do a similar thing with a demon, but it's, it's less of an issue with... The demon, just because of his melee range, he'll walk right up to it. At the water elemental's range of three, the catapult will actually still be able to attack the water elemental. So it requires a bit more micromanagement on your part. So my catapults are in place right now. I had a bit of a defensive position set up where I knew that Toby would not have vision of me. 
and the catapults, I just have catapults and archers that are ready to defend the base and make sure that we're not in a position where some huge force of Tobies will come through and wipe us out. And that's a lot of spearmen right there. Plus he has the warlock, plus he has the catapult. If I tried to make an attack in on his base right now without my water elementals, it would have been game over. I, I had some forces, but we weren't ready to break our way through and win. However, I wish we could see my base right now, because the conjurers are coming. And many a conjurer am I going for here. You know, one conjurer is great, two is lovely, and 200 is the dream. Mass conjurers will win every time. Yeah, Toby, it looks like he had some base difficulties, too, if you notice those peons looping around the right side for the gold mine. And, ah, he's able to get the demon now. So, since he's able to get the demon, I believe my I, I believe that's it on the mini-map. I think that's my first water elemental on the way over. Yep, it's definitely it. He's going to notice it soon. It's crossing the bridge right now if you, we look at the mini-map. Water Elemental number one. With many, many more on the way. Yep, it's freak out mode. But he knows he needs to summon the demon. So, with the Water Elemental, I still had not even thought of the fact that getting the... I hadn't thought of the fact that getting the vision of his base would be so important. I, I have no idea why I didn't think of that. But here comes the demon. This is the classic Warcraft 1 matchup. So I, I figured his gold mine was over there. My goal was to stop his economy. And I succeeded. As you notice, all the peons are running. A mass runaway. Mass exodus out. And now here comes the battle. And so I was hoping the damage is not quite good enough. And so as you saw, I got that attack on the demon, but the server lag was making it difficult to kite and fight. But now here's a warlock to kill. And this whole time, he's not bringing in gold. So he's trying to bring him back around, but it's going to be a risky move to do that. Yep. And I still have gold pouring in. And I'm making more and more conjurers as this goes. So getting that first summonable in there is important. Warlock Falls, one shot. R.I.P. Dang, that Spearman took two shots to kill. Attacks in Warcraft, Orcs and Humans, can either do full damage, half damage, or miss. Uh, is something I think that's how it works anyway I, I could be wrong about that now that I'm thinking about it but I, I think that's how they work it's either no damage half damage or full damage um, whenever they whenever they strike later Warcraft games apply a damage range function where it's uh, like in Warcraft 2 it's actually it's a, a range of damage that can occur so we got the classic standoff here I've said this in numerous other videos, but the Warcraft movie missed a huge opportunity. Gul'dan should have summoned a demon, and then have a human ma mage, or uh, possibly even Khadgar directly, um, summon a water elemental to take down the demon. But alas, we had no demon and water elemental fight. Otherwise, it, it is a wonderful movie though, by the way. If you've not seen the Warcraft movie, please go and see it and tell Blizzard that we want Warcraft 2. I want Uther the Lightbringer on the big screen. Uh, on the big screen. Um, I don't know, maybe Ewan McGregor could play him or something like that. Please comment below who you think should play Uther the Lightbringer in the Warcraft 2 movie, which unfortunately will likely never be made, but, uh, but it could be. A lot of the critics were confused when the Warcraft movie came out. And I saw numerous reviews that said things like, In a world with night elves and draenei and trolls, it's a shame that this movie was degraded 
down to just the basics of orcs and humans. And it's like, come on, they didn't even know that it was about the game Warcraft Orcs and Humans, in which there are only Warcraft, you know, there are only Orcs and Humans. So here come the Water Elementals. One is good, two is great. The catapult falls, and ah, my gold mine just fell. But there's really nothing more that Toby can do to defeat me. And here comes my army of conjurers. I had nine of them. There we go. So that's the strategy. It's overpowered. Play as humans. Make a bunch of conjurers. And bring them out. They'll crush everything. Rain of Fire is pretty good too, by the way. The Poison Cloud is nice. I think Rain of Fire might be more powerful than the Poison Cloud, though. But, Toby, sorry about that. I filled your base with water elementals. And I mean, you know, what can you do? Look at those water elementals crushing the base. So, this was fun, though. I'm glad we were able to do this. Hopefully we can play again. Possibly let's do a rematch in the War 1 Gus uh, mod. So we can play it that way. Uh, I'd also be down with a Warcraft 2 Battle.net Edition match. That'd be a lot of fun. And quite frankly, I'm down with any match. Likewise, if any other YouTubers want to collaborate on a Warcraft Orcs and Humans online 1 vs. 1 match, if you think you can take down my Mass Conjurers, let me know. I accept the challenge, and I want to see it done, quite frankly. I think it'd be quite amazing. The total, total base destruction. forget if I summoned more water elementals. I'm sure I did. We got five up there right now. Oh yeah, and the next wave is coming. Or actually, I think I'm just sending my whole army across. Finishing things out there. Setting fire to a barracks with water. It's an impressive skill that only the water elementals are capable of. Yep, here come the archers. Warcraft 1 is beautiful. I love the way that the the sprites look and incredible game. Victory for Azeroth. Victory for Midcraft. Toby, this was so much fun. Thanks again. Really appreciate you. And looking forward to doing another match together in the not so distant future. I'm Mick, this is Midcraft. Look forward to catching you in the next video.